You guys remember when this guy used to be called Dustin O'Daffer? I guess when he when he got this like Dustin's meme world, like when they allowed you to get usernames, he tried it out, didn't work, or whatever, and he's like, oh, maybe I could change my name now. He always wanted Dustin's meme world, and then he got it, so he just changed his name. But um, I mean, he could have done that back then too. Maybe he was kind of banking on like, oh, this is the brand, but then he wouldn't. Have, I don't know. I don't really know why he did that, but yeah. Dude, I love these videos. And dude, this guy's thumbnail game is on point. Like, these thumbnails are actually amazing. He hasn't uploaded in a minute though. The whole the whole idea is buy and sell, right? Buy low, sell high, buy high, sell low. Nobody thinks about like there's a third option, it's wait. Whenever you're not buying or selling, you're doing that third option. And do you Weight high or weight low? Like that's really the, the crux of stocks. If you can figure out when like you should do this third thing and when it's not okay to do the third thing, that's really when you figured it out. And people are like, okay, the, 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 the philosophy is always like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. I'll wait. I'll hold, right? If you're... If your attitude is, I'm going to hold when I'm at a loss, why would you hold when you're at a win? Because then you're always holding. Then you're not earning anything. Then your money's sitting there doing nothing. You could put it into some other investment that's actually earning you some money, like real estate. Get some rental income off that. I just don't understand what the logic is for people. Why would people, well, I diamond hands, bro, hold, hold, hold strong. Why? Why? Are you gonna if you're holding strong when you're at a loss, why would you hold strong when you're at a gain? And then, you know, if you're gonna hold strong when you're at a gain, then just go ahead and sell while you're at a loss. Yeah. It always goes well. And at that point you gotta sell because you're just looking at the number. You're looking at the number, but the number's not in your bank account. My dad always said, he had a quote, he said, You can never count on money unless it's in your hands. And you, whenever he would tell me that, he would always have money in his hands and he would be counting it. He'd be counting money. He's like, you can never count on money unless it's in your hands. I mean, you're, you're kind of, when you enter the stock market, you're kind of playing a losing game. For the majority of the time you're playing a losing game, you have to have an insanely strong strategic advantage. You can't be the average trader. You have to be better than average because the average trader will lose money because there's a, a substantial group of people Substantially large group of people, although a very small minority in the grand scheme of things, but a substantial group of people who will always make money, who basically do market manipulation, who will make money no matter what. And if they make money, somebody has to lose money in the process. Indirectly, somebody's going to lose money. And so it's not like the it's not like people who, who are bad at stocks, they lose money. People who are good at stocks, they uh, gain money. And people who are right in the middle, they're average. They don't lose, they don't gain. No, people who are average are, are at the bottom, they lose money. A certain amount of money will be siphoned out and go to the basically the cheaters of the group. So the people who are the losers lose more than the winners win. So you have to really like actually seriously win big time to win even a little bit in stocks. I really need to pee, but I can't leave my computer. I this is the thing, bro. Like if you're going to do stocks, bro, just manipulate the market. That's the way you do it. That's really how you do it. Just get insider information. It's not illegal if um, you're the one controlling the laws. Illegal is just a word that people use to describe the rules of the game, not the laws of the game, but it's just the rules of the game that the biggest, baddest bully on the block decides to um, enforce upon you. Other people don't play by the same rules. Look at all these politicians. People always tell me, oh, look at like Nancy Pelosi's husband making all these insider trades, none of them are arrested, none of them are in any legal trouble for any of that stuff. So like, laws don't apply to everyone. It's, imagine you're on a playground and the, the biggest bully in the sandbox is like, you guys are gonna, these are the rules. The law doesn't apply to him. He could do whatever he wants. And the law doesn't apply to his friends. And the law doesn't apply to the other bully who he's afraid of. They can get away with it. So, yeah, reach that level, and then you don't have to worry about laws. I'm not selling at a loss.
What's up, guys? It's Chad Broski, and I've got one question for you. Are you Chad Broski? What a name. Tired of being poor? Do you want me to show you how to go from a minimum wage job to driving a Lamborghini in literal seconds? You're going to learn to trade options. 99% of traders lose money. It's always a Lamborghini. None of them ever go like, hey, let me show you how to drive a McLaren. I'm going to get you driving a Pagani. It's always Lamborghini every time. In the market, but not you. You're different. different. My Instagram account is all the proof you need that I'm a success. <laughs> Yo, that's actually hilarious. That's actually hilarious that he said that because people literally like, they're like, oh, bro. Yeah, I totally do. So I run these Cash Cow YouTube channels. Here, look at my Instagram. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, she's Instagram. That's reasonable. And people believe it. Slide out of your huge bed and feel the heated tile under your feet. You take a stroll down. This is the thing. These are cults, bro. You're selling a dream. These are literally just cults. In your magnificent hallway, you just had a custom exhaust installed on the Lamborghini. The vlog fam is itching to hear it. <laughs> That's the gourmet breakfast. You're telling me all I have to do is buy this course and follow along? No. I don't understand why, why people like fail to realize this. If this, why doesn't the guy making the course do this? You ever thought about that? Why doesn't the guy who makes the course and I do this just do those things? And if he does and he's making all his money, let's say the guy doing this is making like a thousand dollars an hour, right? Why would he care about getting people to pay it $997 or a thousand dollars for a course? Why would he care so much about trying to market to these people? Why wouldn't he want it all for himself? If dropshipping is supposedly becoming like a saturated business, why do these people who are in dropshipping want to sell so many courses to get more people into dropshipping? It's because those people selling those courses bullshit. They're not actually in dropshipping. They might do dropshipping and they might make some money from it, but the majority of the money they're making is from the course. If the ultimate stonks profit guy doesn't show you exactly how to earn. And if, if it was any other way, if the majority of the money they made was from dropshipping and not the course, then they wouldn't charge so much for the course. It's just that simple. The proof that they make all that money from the course is in the price of the course. Hustlers University is a bit, is, is like 50, 50, cause it's like a $50 a course. So it's like a, you know, you can look at it as like this or that, right? Who's to really say, but with the courses that are like Alex Becker's course was $1,750. That's what it was. And $750. It was $1,750. I didn't buy it, I torrented it, but I looked online for his thing. And uh, apparently you can like get it back if you did, if it didn't work for you. But like I saw on fucking Reddit, like people were not able to get it back. You had to, in terms of conditions, they're like, oh, you had to try this thing and this thing and this thing. And so, uh, yeah, people wasted money on that shit. And it was just a fucking, it was a course that you can literally go on Pirate Bay and find. But um, if these people truly have money like that, they won't be out here begging for your money like that. It's that simple. So if they are begging for it, that stands to reason, if you make a simple deduction, if they are begging for your money like that, then they don't have that money. How much does it cost? Now the regular price for all of this is $10,000. But oh my God. when you act now, because you're my friend, you're gonna get everything for just nine ninety seven. dollars Yeah, these guys act like they're your friend, bro. That's And that's the most psychopathic part of it all. That's the most psychopathic, they're like, they literally, they set up like fake live streams. At this point, they're probably gonna be using like chat GPT to like communicate with you, set up a chat bot with like an API going like, oh yeah, here's a data set of, of all the things I've said online. Use what I say and have a conversation with this person as if you were me and you're trying to get them in the course. And they're gonna be using chat GPT to do it. Try to build like a personal connection. They're probably gonna be like, hey, text my number or whatever. You know, I'll have a conversation with you. That's a great strategy for someone to use. Probably make them a lot of money and get them a lot of sales. And it's completely psychopathic. That's a lot of money for me right now. Listen to me, Doomer. If you don't take action and invest in yourself today. If this guy cares so much, if he's your friend, why would he ask for so much money from you? Why wouldn't he go like, hey, let me help you get up and running. Then when you're up and running, pay me back. Or better yet, let's start a business together. Why, how come none of these dropshipping guys ever do this? If they truly have a good success rate, how come they never do this? You can pay $997 or 
you can have my course for free under the condition that the business you start, I get to keep 10% of it. Because then healthy people would do it. Healthy people would try their course, and if it's actually a good course and if it's successful, and people start businesses off of it, then you get to have crazy big income, not just the single one-time payment. This dude, Faison, was like, no way, bro. They're playing that boy's a liar at my fucking gym. Where the fuck's the volume knob? <laughs> what was I saying? Ah, whatever. I forgot. You'll likely be poor for the rest. Yeah, it, it's literally, if I was one of these people and I was making these courses, I would give people the option like, hey, pay one time or give me a percentage of your business. Because that would, that would be a great way to do it. That would make me a ton of money. And uh, like, if I'm so rich, I don't need your money right away. So I can give you the course for free. Rest of your life. <laughs> if I give you $997, I can finally stop being poor. All right, I'll buy the course. <laughs> this is it. I'm finally going to make something of myself. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to go from homeless to driving a Lamborghini. And you're going to do it not by manipulating the stock market with your superior PhD brain power that beats 99% of the market and gets higher returns than the S&P 500. No, you're going to get it by building a personal brand around selling stocks and make it look like you're a huge success and sell a course on the back of that. Are you ready to get started? Let's make some money. Oh my God, wait. This happened. I don't know if this happened to this degree in this world yet because I know there's people that sell courses on how to sell courses. But this happened with ebooks. Because in like the hacking, hack forums type world, right? Hack forums, raid forums, rest in peace. Uh, leak forums, rest in peace. Damn, all these forum sites are getting taken down. I wonder if demon forums is still up. That one's a bit of, that one's, I stay away from that one. But there's like sinisterly, I haven't been on that one in forever. It's been like 10 years or something like that since I've been on that website. But um, there's obviously hack forums. Uh, Leak Zone is, is one that we go on now. Breach forums is like the one that's like everybody's like, oh, breach forums because all these data breaches keep happening. Um, Nulled, I believe Nulled is still up. I believe Cracked.to is still up. I believe Cracking King is still up. Um... Damn, there's a lot, but basically all these websites are like same thing. They're same. They're same like, I don't know if it's a WordPress template or whatever, but they're all like the same sort of thing. Um, Raid forms is a bit different, man. That was the best one. It was really was the best one. Rest in peace. But the thing is, in those websites, they don't have courses. They have eBooks. So it's like you go to sections. It's like oh, monetization methods, autopilot, whatever bullshit people have, um, auto buy stores, and then it's like eBooks. How to make this much money using this PayPal scam, cash app scam, whatever, right? And you can, you know, download some ebooks for free and then some ebooks, they make you pay for the ebooks and they're really convincing with it. And sometimes if you pay for an ebook, sometimes it's just bullshit. Sometimes it might actually work. I've heard stories of paid ebooks actually working. Um, have story so now that I look back at it, those people were actually pathological liars, people who told me those stories. So, you know, who knows how true those were. But literally, this started happening where people started buying ebooks. And actually, I got some ebooks for free um, where I used to be involved in this kind of thing. But I downloaded some of these ebooks, and it was literally the ebook was how to make money selling ebooks on like the same website that you got this ebook from. So they were like describing, they were telling them like how to do exactly what they just did. That that happened and that was like a meta for a while, for like a solid like month and a half to, to three months or so, something like that. Like all the eBooks were just on how to sell eBooks. And that was like in 2018 or something like that. If people, if people were a part of that, they'll remember. Your imagination, <clears throat> I mean manifestation. <laughs> this will show you how to use faith, auto-suggestion, and desire to transmute your sex energy into the workshop of the imagination and open the door to the temple of wisdom. And yeah, bro. Law of attraction, bro. Law of attraction. That's what they always say. Broadcast the signal that attracts your dreams. Wow, is it really that easy? 
Yup, now all you gotta do is post a couple of pictures to Instagram that make you look like a total baller and sell your course. I feel like if you really want to make the most money, you gotta actually have a good course. If you have a good course, people won't call you a scam. And then when you basically be a baller on Instagram and then you sell your course, it's gonna be legit. And in that way, like in that whole process, and if people actually vouch for you, like regular normal people that everybody trusts actually vouches for you, bro, that would add so much validation to all the shit that you're doing on Instagram. And then you'd really get a lot of buys. Then it wouldn't just be people like in the world of like, oh, I want to start a social media marketing agency. It would be people like in the mainstream, bro. It would hit the mainstream. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how it goes. I know, I know plenty of, um, plenty of girls who, uh, are or would make for terrible, terrible mothers. Dude. I should get a college education. Dude, this is absurd. White men are committing suicide at higher rates, yeah. Oh my God. You know, I went to a, a liberal arts college for a year. So I've seen girls like this, like precisely like this. Like it's scary. Like this isn't even something that I want to laugh at. It's like, it's painful to watch. Like do really, really attractive guys have it, have it like super easy? Cause like attractive girls have it so easy that you could fuck up your life so much. And like make every terrible decision for like the first 25 years of your life and just like be an absolute like fucking psychopath and, and treat everyone like a piece of shit. And you'd still be at like a reasonable position. You won't be homeless. Like you'd be good, you know, you'd be good to marry a simp or whatever, you know, and then he pays your bills. Do, do attractive guys have the same sort of thing? I don't know. I don't know any like super attractive guys. Behold our newest campaign. Ooh. What? Wait. This campaign isn't progressive enough. <gasps> what do you mean? This couple should be mixed race. That way we don't promote white supremacy. Oh my god, dude. That's exactly who does it. These are the people that do it. That's exactly how this works. Oh my god, and I, I never even put two and two together. Like, who's the, who are the people behind all these stupid decisions? Oh, it's the same people who graduate from these colleges. All these jobs are like, oh, you have to have a college degree. Nah, no, don't have a college degree. You're gonna be brainwashed, brainwashed by all these people. I don't want people that have college degrees. No new matches. Shame. Where have all the good men gone? Oh, life of a strong single mother. Right, you gotta add that in there. Dude. Hi. Hi. Why don't we network back at my place? I'm not trying to say I'm a Chad or nothing. I'm not trying to say that at all. But the most girl attention I've ever gotten in my life was from single mothers on multiple occasions like completely randomly completely separate over the over the past like four years it's almost exclusively been single mothers trying to get me back to their place and that's how i became the most inclusive marketer in my industry That's my son. He is my everything. Oh my God. He is my everything. After neglecting your child, bro. I can't watch this, dude. Yo. 
<laughs> Dude. <laughs> the way that it ended, I'm just now realizing what just happened. The way that it... <laughs> Yo, who voiced that at the end? Yo, that's actually too funny, bro. Yeah, this is a hilarious video. I'm so proud of this guy. I'm actually tearing up from that. I cried, bro. I cried. <laughs> Based kid saving Chad from a life of mediocrity. That's facts right there, bro. It's too funny because it's like this is what girls are like treated. This is what girls are are are, are encouraged to be like in society. Like, yeah, bro. Just neglect your child. Just let them grow up to be complete fucking, you know, bumbling buffoon primates. Don't teach them to socialize or play games. Or do anything like that, or like use their brain at all. Don't teach them to do anything like that. Don't teach them that actions have consequences. Just fucking <clears throat> make them everybody else's problem, you know? And then if, uh, you know, when they get to school and they start misbehaving and they go like, hey, your son is like, you know, fucking pissing his pants and cheating off the other students and pushing people on the playground, on the floor, over the wood chips. Uh, yeah, you gotta do something about it. They're like, not my Steven. How? There's no way. You must be mistaken. You must have, uh, it must be some other child. There's no way it was my boy. I, I raised him so well all the time where I was out drinking and partying and acting like a teenager when I should have been acting like an adult. I hear so many, so many females, uh, online in particular. I've heard multiple females in person say this kind of thing, but it's always online that they do this. I've heard at least three females in person go like, it's so it's so messed up when a guy doesn't want to date a girl who already has a child. He doesn't want to date a single mother, right? It's not that guys don't want to date single mothers. If if she's a widow or whatever, it doesn't make a difference. And and the, the child doesn't make that much of a difference either. It makes a difference because if you have the idea of wanting to raise a child, if that's something that you want to do with your life, you're not just doing it just for the woman. It's like playing a game on someone else's save file, you know, because the, the kids already somebody's already played that game, you know, or the game has been progressing. And now you got to hop in at some random point rather than starting from the beginning, you know, and playing that like you got to play the tutorial first, which means being with her before she even has a child, not immediately after, not like an immediate you got to be with her for at least like a couple years before she has a child you know at least but the problem is that it's always the single mothers it's almost always the case that they're single mothers for a reason like this for a reason like they're degenerate and they made stupid decisions and it's not that the guys don't want to date single mothers because they're single mothers they don't want to date people who make stupid decisions it just happened to end up like that the majority of the time but in the case that that they didn't make a stupid decision and they ended up a single mother somehow. That doesn't actually affect the decision all that much. In fact, I see it affecting the decision of women far more when when they're like, because women really don't want to date single fathers way, way, way more than men don't want to date single mothers. Way more. It's not even close. Single fathers stay single. Women might act like they like single. Oh, I like single fathers. I like how he's so caring and so compassionate. Yeah, no, they just fuck single fathers, but they don't marry them. <laughs> Some like Billy and Mandy shit, dude. Where's my hug? <laughs> dude. Remember I used to piss girls off in, um, in middle school and high school, but mainly high school, where like, a girl would like come up to like me and a friend or two, right? And like my friend would like go in for a hug or whatever and they'd hug or like a side hug maybe or whatever. And then she would go in for a hug and I'd be like, I'd put my hand out like fist bump. That's it. And I would piss it. They'd be so pissed off. They like wouldn't talk to me ever again. Like ever. Like to, to multiple girls, that was the last time I ever talked to them. Like I think um, I did talk about in my high school recap video, I talked about this one chick, Sonia, and I showed messages where it was like we trolled her or something like that. Where we like said we were going to go to the movie with her or whatever, and we we're going to pull up. She went there. We never pulled up. We like trolled her 
Um, and we were going to do it again, but she didn't fall for it the second time. We were going to actually pull up, like pretend like we're going to hop out the car and then just ditch her. Uh, we're going to like pick her up or whatever. Say we're going to pick her up and then we just leave her there. She'd have to get like Uber back home or whatever. We were, we were really cruel with it. Um, no one ever like, this is society, bro. No one ever taught us like, hey, um, you got to treat girls a little bit of respect. Because like in today's world, bro, you don't have to. No one treats the men with respect. The girls don't treat, never treat me with respect. Why would I treat them with respect? So um, I'm just giving back to society what they gave to me, you know? If, if, if a lot of people, you know, the city, Atlanta, has treated me very well. So best believe when I'm up, I'm going to treat the city very well. But Gwinnett County, nah, they treated me like shit. So fuck them. Sonia was one of those girls where she went in for the hug, hit, gave her with a fist bump, gave her a fist bump, and that was the last time I ever spoke to her, ever. And she overdosed on like fucking, I don't know, Adderall or something. She didn't die, but she didn't come to school for like six months. Hello. Have to seduce her before she gets away. No, no, she's already with like five other dudes. She's already with like five other dudes, and you're gonna be helping pay for her extravagant lifestyle along with these other five dudes. She ain't the one, bro. She's she's a fifth. She's a horcrux. Is the Fed just going- It's a simple little hustle, you know? You can't, well you can. You can knock the hustle actually. But it's a simple little hustle. The same way these other guys hustle these, like they scam these guys. A, a guy scamming you into buying NFTs is just, is the exact same thing as a hoe scamming you into buying her OnlyFans. It's the same thing. They're both be being sellouts of their image of what people think of them and their reputation so that they can collect some of your money. So, so that you can, not even so that they can collect some of your money, so that you can lose money gaining basically nothing. You go in thinking you're going to get something and you leave disappointed and, and feeling guilty about your decision. Oh no, this is not the dip that you buy, bro. This is not the dip that you buy. Uh, Bitcoin transactions are a different thing. And you know what? Bitcoin can be inflated if enough people agree. If enough people feel like there should be more Bitcoin. Um, and you know, it's not like a... It's not even that many people. You only need to talk... You only need to convince like 50 or so people which is like a lot of people, but it's not like that much in the grand scheme of things. You only need to convince like 50 or so people to change the the GitHub repo, to push a new push a new thing to the GitHub repo and to update servers and boom, your new Bitcoin fork, or you can make it like the actual Bitcoin, like legit, you know, core, right? Uh, and now there's like a Bitcoin native segwit segregated witness bitcoin cash like all these different branches but you could even do it to like the core bitcoin uh transaction limits an issue so it's never really gonna be all that valuable um there's other cryptos that are probably gonna go higher than bitcoin um ethereum seems to have a better team behind it monero is actually significantly more private so that one's a great one you don't have to use Turbo Cash or whatever, or Tornado Tornado Cash every time. Someone should, I mean, Tornado Cash isn't even a thing anymore. But someone should make a one of those uh, mixers, but make it a lot better. But, yeah, uh, what's it called? If, if you convince enough people, they can update the servers and boom, that's it. Bitcoin is now, is now there's no longer 26 million in Bitcoin in circulation. There is now 26 billion Bitcoin in circulation. Actually, no, it's like 20, yeah, 26 million or 29 million or 21 million or something like that. Um, and there's a few million Bitcoin that are completely lost to time, actually, because they were in hard drives that got corrupted or destroyed or thrown in a lake or whatever, you know? And also Satoshi Nakamoto's original million. You can't, if you look at it like a game, you're, you're, you're playing the wrong game. You're, you're, you're fooling yourself. Because you might get a high from, from the number going up, but that's, that's the kind of high that you should get from, you know, you scoring a point in soccer.
don't conflate those two because those are not the same thing. You're not actually being being more skilled because you're gaining points. You're not in control of that. I remember the good old days when Bitcoin was 80, $100, $200 even. And it was so valuable that it was, everyone was like, bro, this is the strongest currency in the world. It's the most valuable currency. And are, like people were like losing their minds over how powerful this currency was. And nobody would say that today, even though it's way stronger. Nobody would say that because it's so uh, volatile. Dude. In the year 2020, one Bitcoin will be worth 1 million US dollars. Isn't he dead now? Wait, didn't John McAfee die?